Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Janet Namaste, and I'm here to help you awaken your hidden talents and gifts that you're destined to share with the world. So whether you're brand new to meditation, healing, regression, or well into your spiritual journey, this podcast will bring you the clarity that your heart has been seeking. You will hear beautiful and powerful stories from world-renowned healers and global change makers that will inspire you as you journey through your destined path. Join me as we dive in together. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Janet Namaste, the podcast. Um, always a pleasure to connect today. Um, I just wrapped up an incredible conversation with Melissa Davis. You guys are going to love her. She is the founder of Elevate Higher Solutions. It's a technology staffing firm located in Atlanta, Georgia. And they have an office also in Miami, Florida. They're also virtual as well. Um, And she founded Elevate Solutions in 2012 as the culmination of her passion for business, service. Like she's an incredible connector. She makes meaningful connections so people can grow and flourish in the right career that is best for them at that moment. So today she's actually known for her excellence in finding the right talent for some of the world's fastest growing tech startups and high growth organizations while transforming their success trajectory. She's incredible of what she does. And her favorite part of what she shared with me of being a small business owner, but it's not just a small business owner. She grew into this multi-million dollar business operation of of truly doing what she loves um, is the people. Like she loves people. She's a people person. She's a connector. She um, loves love. Um, She's passionate and she loves making introductions. Like how many connections I've made just of knowing her (laughs) is, is unbelievable. And She's she's this dream weaver that change that really changed people's lives for the better. She uh, her background is where she graduated from the University of Maine. Must have been really cold out there because too cold. Um, so then she moved down to Atlanta, Georgia, <laughs> um, for the majority of her career, and now she's in Miami. And um, her company, Elevate Solutions, earned multiple accolades, including the recognition of the Inc. 5000 list in 2018. It was voted Best of Georgia in 2021 and is a certified woman-owned organization. Like, awesome list. So through her career, she worked with almost every behavioral assessment out there. But nothing made such a profound impact on her life as the Enneagram. So since her introduction to this body of work in 2019, she studied with the Enneagram Institute. She has taken numerous courses. She's like a forever student and an incredible mentor and teacher. Um, And she's taught workshops um, around the world, you know, both inside the corporate world and externally for Um, people like you and I, you have individuals. And um, it's just unbelievable how destiny kind of guides you into the path of of becoming, embodying the true you and of what it is that you love. So with her newfound passion for the Enneagram, she devotes her time now helping people make meaningful connections with themselves so they can really flourish and expand and grow and cultivate the love that's inside their hearts. And then you just live a more authentic life. I adore Melissa on a personal level, on a professional level. She, um, she's one of the most selfless people I know in sharing her knowledge and genuinely caring about humanity and doing I don't want to say whatever it takes, but doing things with integrity of researching the intricacies of how to make life easier. She finds different patterns in everything. And when we met many years ago, it was just, it was an instant connection. And I love having her and on the gram and having this conversation with her because 
um, speaking to Melissa, everything, it just flows. Everything flows. She just gets it and she gets it on such a deep level. So I hope you love this podcast. And if you've been enjoying listening to um, Janet and Almas the pod, and, or if this is your first time, welcome, 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 but please do share this recording and other, other, um, pods with others, write your comments, because this is really like, we're here to bring more light to the world. We're here. Um, our mission here on this planet is to project and to inspire others with different kinds of information. And maybe perhaps there was something in this pod that inspires you. So definitely share. It helps us. It helps you. And we're part of this circuitry of love. So enjoy the pod. Enjoy listening to Melissa Davis, the Enneagram expert. So I'm so I'm excited to have this conversation again for times three, the third time. <laughs> And really, third time's a charm. Melissa and I, um, we were on Instagram a couple of times, and there was definitely some Mercury pre-retrograde shadow stuff going on um, in the world because we just weren't able to upload the video. But we were going to record this pod anyway to educate our viewers and listeners about the Enneagram. So um, it just, the universe kind of pushes us into what we were meant to be doing. So welcome back again, Melissa, for the third time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so um, just tell the, you know, our viewers, our listeners, like briefly about um, your like discovery in the Enneagram, like what it's, yeah. what it, how it all like, you know, just fell right before you. Yes. Well, I'll give a little bit of um, background. So um, I always, I've always been fascinated with how humans work, like why we do the things we do, how we show up the way we show up. And I think a lot of people, anybody that's like in this community, in your community, Janet, are people that are naturally curious seekers, desiring more, understanding more, more intuitive. Um, so I had a friend introduce this to me. My best friend in the whole wide world introduced it to me years and years ago, but I wasn't ready for it. You know how like sometimes things show up in your life and you just, it's the right time. And sometimes it's not the right time. So I learned about it years ago and then it showed back up. And I was at a, an event, a yoga event. And it was like aha moments, like light bulbs just lit up. And like the curious creature I am during COVID, I decided to spend an entire year intensely learning it with the Institute and get certified to um, kind of bring this tool more to my everyday, to my business, to my friends, my family. And it's just, it's been an um, amazing journey with it. But your background is actually in IT, right? Yes. So that's, yes. that's like left brain, right brain stuff going on. Like me, like I have a degree in education and computer science, but you know, I, I do intuitive energy healings and regression work for 20 years. So how is it that you are working in it? You're still in, in that world of tech, right? Yeah. And yes. how, how are you like blending the two? That's a great question. Like I'm in IT, but so I own a IT staffing firm and I help grow, um, especially in Atlanta, some of the fastest growing startups, um, some of the ones that truly change the way we live today. Um, so it's awesome. But part of my, my work, my body of work for the last 20 years has been making meaningful connections. So people flourish in my business. That's what I do. And part of that is I've studied, worked and, um, sort of, uh, developed all these different ways, techniques, um, to understand who people are, what their traits are, what their behaviors are, why they do what they do. So I know every behavioral assessment out there from Myers-Briggs, DISC, Taylor Assessment, um, the Colby, Strength Finders, Love Languages, you name it, I've done it all. But when Enneagram was put in front of me, I was like, it, it sort of um, closed the gap on some of the things that most behavioral assessments 
don't give you and don't answer. And then I looked at this tool of like, not only did it make a profound difference in my personal life, in my marriage life, in my relationships, I then brought it into my company and made such a profound difference within my team. And now I've started doing companies I'm building, um, other entrepreneur groups, their companies, and it's just been a fascinating journey. It's like compatibility, right? And yes. So I love how you how you blended that in. I remember speaking with your husband, and I had him guess, you know, what my enneagram was, right? And he's like, "Well, he he didn't guess my number. He didn't." <laughs> and then and then later on, I said, "No, I I'm a six, which you'll you'll elaborate for our viewers." But and he's like, "No way, Melissa." has a six that is working with her, but this sometimes brings certain challenges. I'm surprised because you guys are so close. I'm like, no, we are extremely loyal. Yes. <laughs> we are extremely, extremely loyal and we will never, never give up unless like there is definitely some sort of betrayal. But I love how, you know, um, I'm learning, like I'm learning about astrology now, even though I, when I tune into astro- into my transmissions, I always tune in into astrology and then I'm dabbling a little bit with human design just to kind of see. And, and I love how the dynamics of the connection, but something really like, um, fascinated me with Enneagram is that being a numerologist and when you were explaining all of the energies of the numbers, um, I was so intrigued by the connection because I see everything in, um, it's almost like a symbolic form, like in almost like geometry type of things of Mm -hmm. symbols and it's it's like almost like marrying the esoteric with the modern mystic of the way that you you mar- you marry those two together. So knowing all those things like human design and astrology about compatibility, I feel that Enneagram, not that the others, I'm not discounting any other modality or or way of getting to the core of our personalities, but it just was so much more for relatable for me at least. So yeah. well, right? and it's so much more relatable. Really, what Enneagram is is a structure for connection, mm. right? And you can make it as complex as you'd like, or you can simplify it. And you know, no matter what you believe in this world or what relates to you, like our perceptions are reality. What connects to you connects to you and only to you, right? And so I think really to me, the Enneagram is a tool that's just a structure for connection. And what's fascinating about it is it's been around since the 1800s, since the Egyptian times. Like it is a very old tool that did come up through kind of the new age world and then got connected to churches. And just just recently, as in like 2016, 2019, is when it really became a little bit more mainstream. So depending on um, what sort of genre and what what direction you take on your study within Enneagram will be kind of the direction that you take. And like I said, you can connect it in any way. You can make it complex or you can simplify it. But either way, I have found that so many people get a lot from it. And um, it was absolutely fascinating to walk it, walk through the journey with you, especially being a numerologist and like the connections and the ties, like all of these tools, especially when they're so old like this, they, they all interweave together. So I think it's brilliant to like have a, have a little bit of knowledge about them all, because really it's just a journey of exploring yourself and those around you. Right. And it's a fun journey, whether it's just a hobby, whether you use it in your work, whether you use it in your company, whether you use it as your superpower, it's just, it's, um, rewarding and it's very compassionate to, to really know the people around you and just have those aha moments because it kind of dissipates the confusion and the disconnection that we often feel with others. Definitely drops the judgment. Like I always yeah. say, you can't make a dog out of a cat. You can't make a number three out of a one. <laughs> That's right. 
totally different. <laughs> a totally, totally different. But I there's and and I just want to go back. I'm not discounting the other modalities and the other like I have the greatest respect and I'm so intrigued with this with astrology and mysticism and mm-hmm. and of human design. It's like it's like going to a restaurant and of different genres of food. One day you're in the mood. Mm-hmm. For- Indian food. Another day, you're in the mood for Italian food. But imagine eating just Indian food every single day for the rest of your life, not even realizing that the best freaking pizza is down the block, right? Right. So, so that's how I feel. Like it's almost like there's there's um, a lid for every pot of whatever the soul needs. Um, so I I just I just love it. It like like exactly how you said it happens at a perfect time, and mm-hmm. it was in my quest of like really. Um, at a certain age, I guess, like, you know, with astrology, Saturn returns and all these other Jupiter cycles and things like that, we go through life in different cycles. And the Mm -hmm. cycle that I'm in, I guess, is to delve a little bit deeper into the subconscious. So I would love if you could just like share like the, like of the different numbers of the, what the significance of basically the higher aspect and sometimes the lower octave of it. And, um, and while you guys are doing this before taking that test, we're going to put it in the show notes. It's a free, free test. We are not affiliated with, with the company at all. It's just a free test on this website. Truity, we'll put it in the show notes. Um, before taking the test, listen to this, to the numbers and really with your eyes closed as Melissa speaks and without judgment, you know, tune in into of what you think you resonate most with. So, yeah. Um, and right? I really, I want to put out there, um, the test is just a tool to get us to closer to the numbers we really possibly are, but it's not, a, um, the test doesn't tell you exactly who you really, it's a self-development tool more than anything. So you've got to go on the journey yourself to kind of figure out, does this resonate? Does this one really fit me? Um, so Enneagram is sort of structured with, we are kind of, we come into this world and we are seeking safety, security, and love from the first moment we take our breath to the day we die. That is the essence of what humans are looking for, safety, security, and love. And from zero to two, you're observing um, your environment around you. And depending on what you get energetically from your family, what you get verbally from your family, what you get physically is gonna kind of create what they call this inner wound or this fear or this challenge, or there's many terminology, you can name it, you know, an adjective to whatever you want to call it. But what it does is instill this mode of how we're going to show up for the seeking, for the desire of safety, security, and love in the future or on on an ongoing basis. So taking you around the circle, like eights, we always start with eights. I lucky eight. My company is named Elevate. I, everything in my life is eights, but, um, so eights are the challenger. They they can be a little bit dominant, kind of aggressive, but they're the big, powerful, bold person in the room. You always know their energy. Um, their kind of inner wound was they needed to, um, they had inconsistency. So they kind of had to take care of themselves. So they're very guarded, very protective. But when they become, when they move into their comfort zone, they feel incredibly safe, secure, and loved. They become the two, the helper. And that's when they're like the sappy savior, want to help in and solve everybody's problems. So they've got a tough side to them and a soft side to them. Then we go into a nine, which is like the peacemaker. The peacemaker sort of learned very early on that their needs didn't matter. So they sort of repress those emotions and they just, as long as everybody around them is good, then they're good. Um, But once they evolve and become healthy and, and learn more about themselves, they become a three, which means they become the achiever and they start realizing I do have needs and I do. And they kind of put the spotlight more on themselves than than everybody else. Then we move into a one. A one is the perfectionist. That's my husband. Um, 
they sort of came into this world feeling like they have to perfect everything and that they have to be good and whole. Their biggest fear is um, to not be seen as good and not doing good. So their mission in life is to be the fixer. Um, But when they sort of evolve and go into their greatest good, they really understand. um, They let down their guard. They stop perfecting and they can um, live a little bit more free. Um, Then we go into the two, which is the helper. Helpers are beautiful, beautiful souls. They come, they learn. Their, Their gift to the world is I want to feel love, safety, and security through others by helping others, um, which that's great. And majority of the time it really serves them. But then when they do evolve, they realize they don't have to be everything to everybody. And they may not have all the resources to fulfill everybody's needs and that their needs do matter. Um, then we move into a three, which is the achiever. So these are our pacemakers. They kind of are high, high energy type group. Um, but they, they live for safety, security, and love for them is recognition being, um, recognized for what they do in the world. Um, and actually when they become, when they move into their highest and greatest good, they move into the six, which they then, um, want the tribe, they start sort of achieving through others. Um, Then we move into the four, the four is the individualists. They're kind of the interesting, dramatic, romantic, artsy type. Um, They sort of, their, their, their fear, their wound was something was missing. So they have to project something different to feel seen, felt, love, safety, security, all of that. Um, when they become whole, they actually become a one and they start stop perfecting themselves and they want to like bring that gift into the world. But then we go into a five. I love fives. My greatest good as being a seven, I go into a five. So five is the investigator. Um, they're the knowledge folks. They actually are the most introverted of, of the Enneagram and they look for solace in knowledge. They feel most comfortable and most loved and most seen and heard when they um, have the knowledge, the power, the gift. But when they become very secure with it, they become the eight and they become the leader, which is just beautiful. Then we have six, which is Janet. Janet is, you know, the sixes are the skeptics of the world, but they're also the most loyal. So they're always seeking, they're, they're, um, looking for knowledge, for truth, to feel safety and secure. Um, and then when they do become whole and in, in their highest and greatest good, they go into a three and they become achiever. And that's when they want to get stuff done so that they can help and give to others. And then we have me, the seven. The sevens are the joy bombs of the Enneagram. And I'm not just saying that because it's me, but sevens truly are the most optimistic, high energy of the Enneagram. Um, but part of it is, is because they're seeking stimuli. They, they are sort of running from emotion. Um, so they're like, Oh, if this doesn't feel good over here, I'm just going to go over here. Um, so, but when we get grounded, we go in, when we go into our highest and greatest good, we go into the five and that's when we slow down and we start integrating all the all the stimulus we've received, whether it's stimulus from learning, whether it's stimulus from people, whether it's, you know, we like ground into our greatness. So that's a little bit about the circle and each type. Enya stands for nine in gram. So there's nine types. And what people need to realize is there's all nine in us. I'm sure when I went around, you know, there's all nine aspects in us. And what I love, and I'll tell you the difference between Enneagram and all the other typologies or all the other personal assessments I've ever done is it truly understands that we're a living organism. Mm -hmm. We're constantly oscillating different circumstances, disappearing, environments, different friend groups at work versus home, we are different. So you operate around the the diagram and you show up as different people. And that's 
that was the biggest gap of, a, of it all. That was the hole that needed to be filled with me with these type of behavioral assessments and where, you know, in Enneagram just really resonated. Because also you like constantly, you, you know, you get trapped in these patterns. We've all been stuck. If yeah. you haven't been stuck in life, then hallelujah, God bless you. And, and I hope that you never get stuck. But if you do, not, you, you aren't human if you've yes, never been stuck. Right. <laughs> and if you get stuck, you start to, you start to um, ponder the questions. You start to analyze, like, why do I get trapped in these patterns? And my patterns are very different than your patterns. And your patterns are very different than somebody else's patterns, right? And um, the Enneagram also sets you free with kind of showing you, it's like they say, kind of showing you your blind spots, things you don't, you're not even really aware of because a lot of it happens on a very subconscious level. That's true. Just, just when you think you got unstuck and you finally had figured it out, all of a sudden another obstacle comes and that's yes. the way we oscillate, right? And we're like, okay, yes. so I, now I have to take the persona of not being a six, but try to go into the higher aspect of a number three to go through this, right? So yes. we're kind of going back and forth, but it is, I love how you said that it's, it's a little, like we have a little of those numbers within us. Like, it's like almost like this pot mm-hmm. of of soup and the different ingredients, just like astrology. We yeah. have we have the different elements, different planets, the constellations were formed a certain way. We chose the moment that we were born, the time, the date, the birth, like everything, right? The, the yeah. place, the location. So all of these are all coordinate systems, right? And, and as energy beings, like I love like, like the typology of astrology, where we have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, and then of numerology as well, that although numerologically I resonate as a number four, you resonate as a number eight, which is the essence that that's, that's another pod, right? We'll do a whole yes. numerology podcast, but depending on how we go through life as a collective, the year that we are all in the entire humanity on the planet, 2022, we're all going through the energy of number six, two plus two plus two is six. So it's your all... year, Janet. <laughs> oh, it's my, it's my Enneagram year. Hello, beautiful angel. So I just wanted for you to take a moment to pause and just take a deep breath in and exhale and just tune into the awareness the space that's right in between the inhale and exhale and allow your beautiful soul to listen to the voice that's inside your heart for it always always knows the truth it always knows the way back home to you it's the gps of your eternal your vibrant light so beautiful soul let me ask you a question like have you ever felt disconnected to what was in your 3d world what appears to be your 3d world and what you know is your potential and if you have like did you ever have this aha moment this spiritual awakening and then ask oh my god what do i do with it now so if you have been seeking a deeper meaning to your life's purpose or soul guidance or want to know the signs and what they mean and how to navigate through from this moment on, then I have the perfect place for you. And this is called the Soul Star Community. This is something where I, this has been my my dream of mine for so long because truly in the past few years, as the entire globe shifted, like, don't you feel that now, like we're in this accelerated version of earth school and we need to constantly adjust and process all of our experience in like this rapid pace, like all these life lessons into like a total brand new rebirth, which is happening every single moment. It's not just every year on our birthday. It seems like it's every day. You're not the same person you were yesterday. So this brand new rebirth is actually happening worldwide. You know, this has been quite the journey and we're evolving. We're truly evolving into the real us. And throughout my own life's journey, I've experienced numerous rebirths and incredible miracles that were 
accompanied by the divine, of course, like quantum healings of my own, my own family members, and the tens of thousands of clients that I have had the honor of facilitating healings. So through the past few years, I have awakened more and more, like even more than I thought I could even imagine to the core of who I truly am. And I know from this moment on, as I took a vow that for the new continuous spiritually evolving me, that whatever role or energy that I surround myself with, it will only be one that is congruent to what my heart feels right. It's all about purposeful living and about surrounding myself with the right vibe, with the right beautiful community. And I just wanted to take a minute to invite you to this perfect nurturing space that I have created. It's called the Soul Star Membership. So this is a private VIP exclusive community for you angels that listen to the podcast, you know, that have followed me on the gram and that have been with me for quite some time. So even if this is your first time tuning in and your heart's resonating with what the pod is about, what my vibration is all about, what this whole entire message is, then check it out. Because every single month, the way that it's going to be structured is I'm going to be channeling in the energy transmission, the energy forecast of the month. And if you tune in live, you get an energy healing as well. So even if you don't show up live, don't even worry about it. It's going to be, everything is recorded on your portal. You have tons of meditations. We have incredible speakers and master classes, beautiful transmissions and channelings of the month. Like you're going to receive the most beautiful, beautiful PDF books every single month that you can grow and evolve with. It's basically like having your own measurable spiritual action plan. Like there's a coach, a spiritual angel that is right by your side as you are in this like beautiful membership. It's an incredible community that is global. And I've been in this realm of work over 20 years professionally, which is wild to me. (laughs) It's absolutely wild. And throughout the two decades of my professional experience as um, an energetic healer and um, the four clairs, I honestly have met the most incredible human galactic souls, truly, and they're all part of the community. So I invite you to join in and to be a part of this beautiful community. There are people from all over the world. So just check it out. It's You can find me at Janet Namaste slash Soul Star. And for you loyal listeners of the pod, just type in the code JNPOD for an additional 10% off the membership. Your heart your soul, and the beautiful people that you're going to be surrounded with will 100% be grateful for the choice that you made. So I am looking forward to meeting you, beautiful being. It's so multifaceted. And next year, as a collective, as a whole, it's going to be your year. We're going to go yes. 2023. Next- 2023 is going to be the joy bomb year of all years. <laughs> oh my God. We're going to, yes, we're going to pump that music up. We're going to, you know, listen, it's, it's a high frequency vibes. It's going to a lot, lots of changes. So, yes. um, but for, for good things. So then we get to rebuild, but so uh, in numerology, we get to experience the essence of different, um, numbers, different vibrations and everything like that. And Enneagram, what I love though, is that you have that beautiful connection of in, in, um, the circle, right. Cause the, there's mm-hmm. the circle from, from eight that goes all the way back to seven, right. Cause it begins yeah. with, which is interesting eight. It just feels like it's like infinity. Maybe that's yeah. why. Maybe no. that's why. It's like, there's no beginning, no ends, like a number, like, like zero, but you can't be a zero Enneagram, right? Is there? No, no. No. So eight is the infinite. And, um, but I, I love how, um, as it goes around, 
how, Mm -hmm. like, there's something that you were teaching. I know this is, this may be a little bit deep work, and this is something that people can learn through um, the workshop that you offer, but Mm -hmm. what is a triad in any What is that exactly? So that's, that's great. And that's also part of why now this is my teaching, my Institute, uh, you know, there's, there's different modalities, teachers and, 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 um, people out there teaching the Enneagram. And so you're going to find different, I, I see it from my lens, from my life, from my, um, experiences, just like any teacher, you know, is offering it from their interpretation. So you've got to remember any modality, whether it's astrology, whether it's numerology, whether it's Enneagram, the source of it is really a representation of, of that, that person's being right. And that's what makes us all special and unique teachers. So with the triads, you start with the eight, nine, and one, and that's kind of the anger triad. What that means is they're, they're, or, or it's like the gut triad. So they kind of go with their gut and they're reactionary. So they kind of react to life and some are going to be a little more aggressive than the others. So even though eight, nine and one, they're all very different people. They show up all very different ways. Eight's going to be more aggressive. One's going to be super passive aggressive. Nine is just going to be passive, not even aggressive until they are right. And so they fundamentally are driven by reacting to life and reacting to life in a fairly, um, anger or fearful way when, when, when life gets tough, obviously, when things are going really well, they're not like operating in that zone. That's your your default, right? Twos, threes, and four operate in that kind of shame and guilt um, energy. And they're the thinking, or I'm sorry, they're the heart triad. So they actually, they feel before they think or do And it's really fundamentally, they're the ones that are going to get a little bit more emotionally. So instead of being angrily charged, they're going to be emotionally charged, but just like a two, three, and four, the two is going to express it differently than the three and differently than the four. Right. And then we have the five, sixes, and sevens. That's the thinking triad. That's the head triad. So our, um, sort of subconscious underground is anxiety and fear. Um, and it's different fear than the anger that we, that shows up in the eights, nines and ones, but in the seven, sixes and fives, you know, we have that anxious energy. That's also why we're high energy, but you think of it, seven's the most extroverted five's the most introverted. So, you know, they find solace by hiding out sevens find solace by being, immersed, you know, like sevens, our biggest fear is to be alone and have to think through our feelings or have to actually feel, or actually have to, you know, settle with ourselves. That's a very uncomfortable zone for us. And six is just, will question everything until they know, until they find their truth. Right. Um, right. so the triads are really important when you think of how somebody's going to show up. So for instance, um, you know, when you're dealing with a relationship with somebody or somebody at work or any kind of former, even with a child, you know, if somebody's, you know, are they, if you very subtly and, and, and really tune in to their natural reaction to things, that kind of gives you this, a bit of self-awareness too of where you belong in the triad and which one you really are. So if you're toggling, because if you were to do the test, a lot of people will test high on like sevens and three show up quite often the same, but they're in a totally different triad. One's more emotional, one's more anxious and sevens and threes have very different that inner original wound. So that's how you can distinctively understand am I a seven or am I three? And that's the self journey that you have to go down and go through. You know what I mean? It's no practitioner and no test can really tell you. It's really the journey of finding yourself, which is also a fun journey in and itself. 
right? It is. It is, especially, you know, because when you when you really start rediscovering who you are, I always say the path of life is the journey back home to your soul, right? Yes. And it's and it's and it's assess not even assessing because it's not a test, but it's acquiring all the love, you know, of the experiences, even the challenges of yes. rating how you have um achieved and conquered that particular challenge because you've all signed up for it. You saw it before in the, in the soul contract and we chose the Enneagram as well. But I have to tell you, like, I'm going to, there's a confession, right? There's always confessions in, in, oh in gosh, blog, right? No, originally when, when it was like about a year and a half ago, when, when you introduced um, mm-hmm. Enneagram to me and I've, of course I've, I've heard about it before, but I didn't delve deep into it. It wasn't, um, and I answered the questions. This is confession time of the way that I perceived myself of where I am going, right? Mm-hmm. Of like, I'm not like this. I am like this, right? Or of, of what I desired, not of necessarily of the essence of my embodiment at that moment. So one thing that I just want to want to share with everyone, when you are doing the assessments and I hate examinations, I hate tests. I feel I opt my children out at times for tests, even though in life you have to Not everyone is a great test taker. Sometimes you're having a shitty day and (laughs) you have incredible intelligence, yet you're not, you know, I I did awful on my SATs here in the US. We have to take that. Yet, you know, my daughter did incredible. Like it depends on me too. And listen, I I had to work so hard to get through school and I did terrible. And I'm I'm dyslexic and anybody who knows me says it's Melissa's like I have a hard time even coming on on things like this, because I have some of those insecurities, but I've also built a multi-million dollar business and been wildly successful. Yes. So it's, it's, it's not about, um, necessarily intelligence. It's about, um, we are all born with a gift in this world. And if you allow yourself to explore that gift, um, it shines. And when you're in your lane and when you're doing what you should be doing, it does come more natural, right? Like Enneagram just comes natural to me. Like it just clicked like that. I didn't have to work hard for it. I didn't have to study. It was so innate in me because it just resonated. And it's, I want to put this out there too, not to um, stop you. I have two thoughts to, you know, one, when you said you were sure and you tested and you thought you were testing to be a six, but how I know you're a six, it's like when you start observing people, so sixes always think of the worst case scenario. And it's like thinking of your daughter and like your daughter going off to college, right? It's like you thought of what's the worst case scenario and then work backwards. That's how six operates. A seven would never even think that way. That would not even pop in my head. A seven would be like, okay, how are we going to get them involved? And how are we going to adjust their dorm room? And how are we going to do this? And how are we, and this is so exciting. Oh my God, we have so much fun. And you're being a six, you're like, oh my God, what if this happens and this and this, and I've got protect for this and this, and oh my God, my biggest fear is this. Do you see the difference of how we just operate in the world? And it's so fascinating. So there's that. The second thing I wanted to mention, which I'm detouring a little bit, but I think it's important to say is I've been wondering, like truly Enneagram has only really come more into, um, mainstream since 2019, really is some of the people will say like, that's when it really kind of popped a little. And you think, how does this tool that's been around since the 1800s just kind of pop? kind of reappear, resurface. And I think we are at such a junction in life. We are such at a hardship at life where we have all this miscommunication, all this uncertainty, all this, we have war around us. We have, you know, all this, the the pandemic, the, the changing of how people live and operate in the world. We have all this change surrounding us. And I think more than ever, humanity wants to feel connected. Humanity wants to understand themselves. We want, we're starting to question everything of where do we belong? How do we fit in? And 
I think this is just another one of those tools. And I think it's beautiful and it's, it, it's certainly divine that it's, it's showing up at a time that I think humanity needs it more than anything, you know? And it's one of those tools that isn't, I believe it's kind of non-biased. It's not attached to anything. So you don't have to be super woo-woo like us to get it. You could be, you don't, but you also don't have to be a seeker to get it either. It can be very simple. And that's the beauty of this tool. And it is, it is super simple because um, the truth shall set you free. So when you are doing the assessment, it takes like five minutes and Mm -hmm. just truly be honest with yourself, be truthful. Mm. There's no judgment. Sometimes we are our worst critics. We are, you know, the, the self, the negative self-talk of even of fearing of making a mistake at times. Like I want to make sure I get this right because I really am attached to the results of really finding out who I am, but really just do it with, with your truth and answer it that way. Because I, I was in denial of the six, but of course I am a six. Like when I, the thought of having my jewels, having to be out of state where I had to take, taken a plane to go visit her when we were visiting the universe. And Melissa, I don't know if I told you, I was on different real estate blogs looking for apartment <laughs> next to the campus. And, yeah. and James saw my husband thought I was out of my mind, but then he's like, even though like, I'm, I'm wondering what he is, but then a part of him was like, you know what? Maybe we should do it. So I'm wondering if he has six in it. It could be, he could be a six too. But Jenna, I just want you to know that's every <laughs> kid's nightmare for their mom to move next door to their college. Oh, but I'm such a poor mom. I'm such a poor mom. I'm mama stay, baby. Mama, mama stay. Yeah, you are mama stay. Yeah, I'm football. I'm football mom on the weekends. But even though I'll wear like my my football hat and my mala beads, but you know you got to you got that's the truth. That's um, yeah. I want you know what something I noticed like you being in the tech world, the safety, security and love, the SSL, isn't that like a tech like SSL isn't that an encryption type of thing? Probably. But yeah, it's you not know, like encryption. Well, I think like, it- I think tech for me sort of grounds me, you know, because it's 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 very it can be very black and white, you know. Um and I just get tech too. It's just how my mind works. You know, I'm just that creative creature. Um, a, but, brilliant, a brilliant but, creative creature. But I'm stuck between, and it's really, if you think about it, it's like the seven and the five really playing out for me. You know, the fives like go underground and like be that mad scientist, like Einstein and probably most likely Elon is a five, right? They're the very sort of logical cerebral types. And I go into that zone. Yeah. But I go into that zone a lot, but, but then the other side of me, and, and it also parlays well with like Pisces. I'm a Pisces. There's duality to me. Right. So there's that like cerebral side and then that artistic right brain, left brain constantly going. And Janet will know, I'll, I'll, I'll be like, Oh my God, I'm in my left brain. And I need to be in my right brain. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you're stuck you're stuck between a six and a five right no that's right <laughs> right that six is showing up for me <laughs> amazing so um for for people that are listening and viewing um I mean I could speak about the Enneagram for hours and hours and hours mm-hmm. um we do have a workshop it's called Enneagrams for your soul's growth that we have that all the info in the show notes also that you can watch you could just download you could watch it at any time you wish and the other thing is um I wanted to also just I know this is like we're going we're going backwards for a second how did you like when you discovered Mm -hmm. your number how was that like of an aha moment to integrate even of like growing, like growing up? Did you have like parents that were really supportive of the way that your brain and the way that your learning ability is? Because the way growing up in the seventies and eighties or whatever is completely different to the way that children are now. Children now, like there's highly sense, like every there's, there are certain labels, even though we want to let go of the labels, but I feel like 
a lot of kids, a lot of people are challenged of I, who is, who am I identifying mm-hmm. with who we are? So your quest of when, or your discovery of knowing that Enneagram, how did it to re, how did it relate to your upbringing? Well, you know, you kind of, everybody does that soul journey. My parents, yeah. you know, divorced when I was two and there, I certainly seven and have that abandonment, but like we were talking the other day, Jen, like who doesn't have some level of abandonment feeling, but seven certainly feel it far more. Um, and I think, I think you're right. I, I think we grew up in a time in a place where it was like, um, we just had to push through and there wasn't a lot of that mental support. Nowadays, kids, like you say, they're, you know, that awokeness, people are more conscious, people are more um, understanding. And I'm talking parents to children to everything. There's just more accessibility, so much more knowledge, so much um, out there that we never had, right? So we, our generation, past generations, we just push through it with the complexity of not knowing. And I don't know, sometimes I think ignorance is bliss. I'm like, I wish I didn't know as as much as I do, but, but I do. And, you know, that's just part of the journey too. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, you learn and, and how I knew, like for me, you know, the difference between a seven and a three is my fear of abandonment was, is so much stronger than my desire to be acknowledged. And those two things can be intertwined and you can sometimes get confused there, but if you really soul search, you know, again, I I can't express more that Enneagram truly is a self-development tool more than anything. It's a journey of truly finding self by unpacking, unlayering, um, and kind of, it, it does shine a light on some of those aspects that you don't even personally see. My favorite thing is when I do this with couples, And, you know, I'll kind of share some stuff, like say on a six, I'm like, you know, this is the typical go-through for a six and, and the six will be like, no, it's not, I don't relate to that. And then the husband will be like, oh, how it is you, you know, because what we also forget is oftentimes we're running from, we're running on like a autopilot on our subconscious zone or even our ego zone, right? Not our authentic zone. And sometimes we need that light to be shined to show us, oh, that's how I'm showing up to other people. That's how other people are receiving me, you know, because our reality, our perception is one thing, other people's reality and perception is another and how they're taking us and how we're receiving and giving um, gets complex, especially the more complex a relationship can be. So um again, this tool helps you sort of unpack some of those issues. And that's why it really is your soul's journey of trying to connect to self. That's really how I see Enneagram. So beautiful. So, so I'm going to ask a few questions, a few questions um, as we wrap up. Okay. And this is, this is, um, a number seven answering everyone. Oh God. Number seven anywhere. So get ready. <laughs> so, as, so get ready as a number seven. Um, I'm going to ask a few things. So um, if you could have dinner with anyone famous, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Mm. Number seven. <laughs> you know, I, I hate to say this right now because I'm not the biggest lover of him to be really frank. But the reason why I'd want dinner is with Elon is because his mind is so mystical and I just want to get in there and like, start like unlay unlayering the layers. Like he's just, he's one of the savants of our lifetime. Right. Um, and for better or worse, and there's the good and bad with all of us, but I would love to just unpack some of his layers. Oh, totally. Okay. Here's another one. If you can travel anywhere in the world right now, where would you be? You know, I have been, um, I've been, uh, Thailand, Bali, those type of areas have been really calling me. I know they're kind of, uh, stereotypical, but I feel like there's energetically there's healing, um, there in, 
it's, there's something that um, I'm desiring to go see, to go be in the jungle, um, to be out out in um, nature in that cool. in that area of the planet. Beautiful, beautiful. And you know, like there is no death. There is no. There is no. We we know this as the woo woo in us. Like life mm-hmm. is cyclical. Our souls are eternal. So. Um, given that we are, we're doing this recording during the time of like, it's like, it was like Holy Week, right? We had mm-hmm. Pasch- and Easter and Ramadan and everything like that. It's the, um, so death and rebirth. What would, if you could eat anything, what would you pick for your last meal? <laughs> oh my goodness. And this is so not morbid. It's just like, oh, no. yummy, yummy, yummy food, right? I come in, be, um, I was born and raised in Northern Maine, which is essentially the North Pole, the, the Arctic. So I love warm, ooey, gooey, yummy, very unhealthy, but comfort food. Yep. So I would pick a lobster pasta of some sort because also coming from Maine, I am a lobster girl. And so that's what I would pick something ooey and gooey with lobster in it. Awesome. All right. And now we're going to play another game because I love, you know, okay. I love games. I love this game. I know. I, know. I have, but I love, I love games. I don't like tests. <laughs> oh my God. I, I, I'm a yeah. gamer. I love playing games. Matter of fact, I had form, I'm an entrepreneur's organization and I had form yep. and my form mate said from age of seven to he went into college, they would finish dinner almost every night and play 30 minutes of some form of board game. I'm like, that is the family I should have been born in because in my family was a big board game. So I'm a big gamer, like that type of game. Yeah. Nintendo, I call it, I still call it Nintendo, even though I know it's like whatever it is these days. It's all the same. It's all the same. Computer games I can't get with, even though I'm technology all the way. It's not my jam. I like a board game. Yeah, me too. Me too. Our game was Boggle at night. The whole family. Oh, cool. Yeah, but I liked it because it was like finding finding the words. I love patterns. I love figuring yes. out patterns. I don't like exams, but I like figuring out patterns. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna play a game. This or that. This or that. This or that. No. Okay. So day or night. Oh, night. Okay. Um, tacos or sushi? Tacos. Okay. Mountains or oceans? Ocean. Yeah, baby. Um, dog or cat? Dog, all the way. <laughs> My baby. I know. I love him. He's he's like this 40 pound freaking <laughs> lap dog. Okay. I spent <laughs> I spent some time in your in your place. You guys hosted me. Thank you so much. And I was, I just finished my kundalini in the morning. Here I am. I'm like sat numb. And all of a sudden my eyes are closed and this big 40 pound dog comes and sits on top of me. <laughs> he like, and he, he's so funny. He has to sit on the lap. On the lap, so she's a lap dog. Where I have a six pound Shih Tzu at home, and she's she's the lap dog. I thought, okay, phone call or text? Phone call all the way. Hate text. Yes, me too. Um, Hip hop or house? That's tough. House, house, boom, boom, boom. Well, yeah. I actually is that house or. EDM. I don't know the difference. I don't love the boom, boom, but I love frequency music. Oh, I love frequency music. Mm-hmm. I love, I love, I like, um, loungy house also yes. and the house, like in the, from the 1990s, like that's, that's my jam, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Um, cook or order in order in. I barely cook. But it's just because of patience. I enjoy doing it. I'm good at it when I do it. But I just, time's of the essence. Okay. I know this answer, but <laughs> while you're walking, while you're, are you listening to on your headphones, music or Janet Namaste, the podcast <laughs> or podcast, not mine. <laughs> Janet Namaste all the way. <laughs> um, I, you know, when I walk, I like to think I'm always, I'm always plugged in. I yeah. love my music time, but I also love to just listen and learn. I'm a curious creature. 
You're you're a beautiful creature. You're a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful angelic creature. So Melissa, this was so fun, so fun. Um, yeah. I can't wait to delve into um, our Enneagram workshop that that um, we're we're doing. But you're going to be teaching everyone of how to really um, delve in deeper up to the essence of who they are. So I cannot wait. So um, thank you for your time. And this is just the beginning. Melissa and I are going to be connecting yes. much more, delving into different numbers and everything like that. We'll put all the information down on the show notes and even of how you can contact Melissa directly for, she does personal readings as well. She works for corporations. Um, well, not for corporations, but you lead workshops, right? For corporations mm-hmm. as yeah. well. So yeah. Thank- Thank you so much, Melissa. This was so much fun. Thank you. It was so fun. And always such a pleasure to see you. Oh, you too. And until next time, everyone, so much love to you. See you soon. Namaste. Namaste. So that was a lot of fun. I always have an incredible time with Melissa. I mean, she's a number seven. How could you not? She's she's always game to do anything at any time that will bring up the vibes in this world, right? So um, before you actually go on that link that I have in the show notes, trudy.com to assess what you are, remember, just like go, go through of what she said of every single number and, and objectively think of what it is that you may be inside, right? And of course, we wear many hats. We have different personas depending on what we're going through in life. And um, But the essence, the core of who we are, perhaps that subconscious patterning we may have um, learned from zero to seven years old, right? That subconscious patterning. So this was an incredible, incredible time. And if you enjoy the show, please do share it with your loved ones. This is how we share and um, raise the frequency of the world of sharing the love. If there's something that inspired your heart, you know, pass it along to a friend, to a loved one. And until next time, thank you so much. I adore and love and appreciate. I appreciate your hearts, your time, and the moment that you just spent with us. So until next time, namaste. Namaste.